Hello, true duelists. My name's Craig Fee, and welcome to the New Card Report. The last archetype for Valiant Smashers has now been revealed, the Centurion Archetype. What if girl ride mech suit? Will it be meta? Will it be trash? We find out as I force this segue to get to talking about the actual cards. Centurion Primera is our first monster, a level 4 light spellcaster type tuner with 1600 attack and defense that on normal or special summon can add any Centurion card from your deck to your hand except for a copy of itself. But if you use this effect you'll make it so you can't special summon another copy of Primera for the rest of the turn, which is an interesting lock. And its other effects show the gimmick of this deck, because once per turn while this card is treated as a continuous trap, it can be special summoned from your spell and trap zone, and while it's treated as a continuous trap, your level 5 and higher monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. Well, by virtue of being a Stratos type monster, it's at, at least playable. <laughs> and if it's even half as easy to get it as a continuous trap as I imagine it is, we'll have a form of self summoning tuner. That's got to be playable in some capacity, right? We do need to take a moment, of course, to say our condolences for either the laws of gravity in her world or just whatever sorts of products she's putting in her hair because it's absolutely killing it. Because whichever one is, is, is responsible for, for this, it's, it's not good. It's, it's not good. Hair shouldn't be able to stand up on its own like that with two huge ass fucking shields going on like each. It's just, it's not right. I mean, it's fine. It looks fine. I'm just saying that can't, that's got to be like super glue in your hair. That shit, that can't be healthy. Up next is Centurion. Is that Trudeau? Do not tell Canadian citizens from the province of Alberta what I just said there. Trudia is a level four dark pyrotype with a thousand attack and 2000 defense and can during the main phase place both itself and one other centurion monster from your hand or deck into your spell and trap zone as continuous traps. And using this effect will of course make it so you can't special summon Trudia for the rest of the turn. Okay, that's, that's an interesting lock for them all to have. While it is a trap card, you can summon itself back to the field and then increase its level by four is the other effect. So that's an interesting, okay, they all go as traps and they all stop being traps. That's that's a pseudo Stratos in a sense, because it can put whatever else it wants into the spell and trap zone and then summon it out, like say the Stratos. So it's showing itself to be a little consistent at least, and it's giving us access to level 12 Synchro Plays, a level infamous for its splashable generic Synchro monsters, such as Assault Blackwing Onimaru the Divine Thunder. <laughs> and that level 12 B Trooper. <laughs> in all seriousness, you're looking at a deck with easy ways to spam out Luluilith and Final Sigma. And you know, thank God for the generic level eights because generic eights are a little bit better than generic 12s, with one exception we'll get to later. Centurion Emmet 6 is the monster we were first teased with. It's a level eight Earth Machine with 2,000 attack and 3,000 defense. It's got an effect that either in the hand or grave can activate to move one of your Centurion monsters you control from your monster zone into the spell and trap zone as a continuous trap, and then summon itself out. And of course, during the main phase, if it itself is treated as a continuous trap, you can special summon it. They did it. They gave the high level monster a self summoning condition. Matter of fact, they doubled down and gave us two. Perfect. All it has to do is summon itself, and all it does is summon itself, and moves them into the monster zone, so you can then trigger their effects to summon and get bonuses. All it does is summon itself, okay? So in level eight, we got a level four tuner, that means we got easy access to 12s. If only they had a level 12 synchro monster. Centurion Legata is a level 12 synchro monster, a light machine with 3,500 attack and 2,000 defense. The materials to summon it are fully generic, and on special you can draw a card from your deck, then destroy the monster your opponent controls with the highest attack, or your choice if it's a tie. It also makes your monsters with 2,000 or less attack indestructible by battle, and during the end phase, it can place one Centurion monster from your hand or grave into your spell and trap zone as a continuous trap. The craziest part of this is that it feels about as difficult to summon as Chaos Angel, Angel, Chaos Angel, and yet it feels so much worse. But it's the main thing to be summoning out, I suppose, because it's got the synergy and it's a 3,500 beater, if nothing else. It's not like it's difficult to get there. I'm just saying, Chaos Angel's a crazy card. 
it pops a card, it draws a card, and you don't even get to choose the pop, really. It's the monster with the highest attack, even if you want to pop the lower attack tuner. The, it's not bad, it's not great, not terrible. Fucking Dyatlov special. Moving on, we've got Stand Up Centurion, the obligatory field spell for the deck depicting anime girl in the anime pose on the anime robot. This card can't be destroyed by the opponent's card effects if you control a Centurion monster, and if it was activated this turn, can during your main phase allow you to send a card from your hand to the grave to place any Centurion monster from your deck into your spell and trap zone as a continuous trap. And the last effect it has triggers if a monster is special summoned to immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon a monster using materials you control including a Centurion monster. Look at that, it's like the Psy Frame Field Spell. It lets you Synchro Summon on the opponent's turn. And with the level 12 focus, you can expect to make, say, Crimson Dragon with this. So that on the opponent's turn, you can summon out Calamity. Fun. This is, I think, the best card in the deck that we've seen, and will make this deck a lot more playable, or a lot weaker with or without it. It's the Field Spell to make the best plays. What a, what a nice change of pace from a deck, he said. Oh, so sarcastically. The other spell we've seen so far is a quick play spell, Faith of Centurion. This card can place any Centurion monster from your hand or grave onto your fields as a continuous trap, and that's it. It does have a grave effect, mind you, to banish itself when a Centurion Synchro monster is special summoned to target a Centurion monster in your grave and place it on your fields as a continuous trap. Did you know that this deck wants you to place your monsters as continuous traps? As to whether this is good, it's not terrible. Going first, you can use it to play a monster into your trap to special it with their effects without having to use your normal summon. Although, the fact that they, they have future special summon locks maybe interferes with it, I don't know. It's not great or terrible. I mean, you could play it. When you're playing second and in subsequent turns it gets a little better, you can just move it into the trap zone to do it. It's like a reborn instead of having to play something from your hand. It's... it exists. I don't even know what else to say about it. It, it, it exists. Moving on to the trap lineup that isn't just your monsters cosplaying as traps, we've got Centurion Phalanx, a normal trap that can target and banish a face-up monster on the field, but it will special summon that monster back to its owner's field during the next standby phase, because uh, apparently we just need a pseudo Farfa effect. It also has the graveyard effect to banish itself to target and revive a Centurion Synchro monster from your graveyard, but doing so will cause that Synchro to lose 1500 attack which will allow the Synchro to apply its own effect to itself of making your monsters with 2,000 or less attack indestructible by battle, but why? <laughs> Both these effects feel kinda eh? Is a Banish so strong for a deck who in archetype, as of now, has one card that interacts with the opponent, being the Synchro to pop a card? Other than that, there's not a whole, you're relying on outside of deck stuff. I just feel like you could have let it banish. I feel like Paleozoic Dinomiscus is, isn't the most insane thing to have in this deck. But what do I know? Nothing, because I also don't know why we have to, you know, drop it down to 2k. Is it to just use it as like link climbing? I, I don't know. You'd think you'd want to be able to revive it to have the biggest number. You thought wrong. Either way, I have too many complaints. The card is eh, and I'm moving on. The last card revealed so far is Truth Centurion, a counter trap that can negate and destroy the activation of a spell or trap card or monster effect by sending a monster from your spell and trap zone to the graveyard. It's worth noting that this card is the only one so far that doesn't specify a continuous trap, meaning that you can use this in the inevitable mirror matchup between this deck and Snake Eye, because that deck's gimmick makes them spells, and if you have them become a spell, they can't activate their effects that apply when they're traps. Ain't that a tragedy? In all actuality, this is an Infernity Barrier for the deck that's not hard to pull off at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it the thumbs up. Wow. Looking at the deck in the grand scheme, uh, it's really just uh, time to address the elephant in the room, and that is, of course, Red, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. I mentioned it earlier, but that's what this deck does, is level 12 synchros, and it's gonna be damn easy to get out Calamity. Matter of fact, you only really need the 
Stratos and one of any other card, 1.5 card combo. You normal summon the Stratos, use it to get the field spell, put the field spell effect to get a level four into your spell a trap zone, summon out the level four as a trap, and then use its effect to put itself back as a trap and get the level eight as a trap. Special summon the level eight. Hey, look at that, you make your level 12 synchro. During the end phase, you can put the tuner back into your spell and trap zone, and then on the opponent's turn, the moment they make any play, you can chain your two monsters, summon the tuner, summon the level four, and may use its effect to make itself level eight chain the field spell, bring out Crimson Dragon, and Crimson Dragon can target your level 12 to bring out Calamity. It's that, it's literally that simple. They do this shit with ease and without anything else, it gives them over 8k damage on board and you didn't get to fucking play. Oh, they, thank, thank God Konami just prints cards like Calamity. The deck does become significantly weaker when that card gets banned, because Calamity is going to fucking die, I promise you that. They can still make a Quasar or Blazar with the same sort of combo, but it's not nearly as devastating as it is. Having played it a little bit, yeah, it seems like it's a pretty solid, fun deck. Even without Calamity, I'd call it fun. In fact, their traps means you can keep making their plays on your turn and the opponent's turn, because you can just chain them as traps. It's got solid, you know, recycling, not recycling, cycling through the deck to get anything because the Strato searches every card except for itself. And with the ability to make easy Synchro 8s, they have a lot more interaction than just simply Quasar Blazar type stuff. It's a fun little deck. I don't really think it's going to be a top tier threat, but I can easily see this being somewhere in and around Gold Pride Punk's level that it is currently, especially depending on what the last card they'll get from this set is, and any support they'll get in the future. And Konami, please, for the love of God, take care of Calamity. I can show you how if you need some, if you need a little bit of help in regards to how to get rid of Calamity, I can think of a way. I'm thinking of the ban list. Ban the fucking card, please. Please, for the mm. don't want to play with Calamity in the game anymore. Because Calamity doesn't let me fucking play. And moving on to the sponsor, thanks as always go to LIFD and the magnetic display. The best way to support my channel currently and the true duelist approved way to show off your favorite cards. Whether sentimental cards, cards that have won you a game, or three cards you threw in at the beginning of the video, because what the hell do you have that matches the Gurren Logon? Nothing. No, I mm, wicked, wicked. It's a wicked. They're wicked cards. I got some wicked gods here. Okay, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do accents for my life. Anyways, if you want to get fifty percent off one of these LAFD magnetic displays, you can go ahead and use my promo code YGOSTRATS15, or you can have it apply automatically by clicking the link in the description of this video. Thanks to LAFD for the support as always, and of course, thank you for watching. So that wraps it up for this new card report. Just covering some of the new cards in this one. The regular update will be out on Friday, as usual. Until then, I've been your host, Craig Fee, and make sure you subscribe to YGO Strats for this week's update to impress your smoking Italian wife, and so you too can be a true duelist.